this free sat v8 finder it actually came in a little bag from amazon one thing i do like about amazon is its packaging everything's like tends to be in a cardboard box for shipping which i really like because it just makes things uh actually environment more environmentally friendly than if it's all blister wrap plastic so let's open her up here and first thing we see is i'll take this out here whoops there comes all the accessories the manual for this device Oh good. Sometimes with these, uh, especially satellite receivers in North America, I did specify North American plug. Now if they have the North American satellites in here, I'll be even more impressed, but we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, so if you want to aim a satellite from your car, here's a car. There is a car cigarette lighter adapter thing. Don't put your finger in there, that might give you a shock. Uh, there's a little strap for the uh, for the case, and it has this uh, pin jack thing here for the, your output of your audio and your video left and right. And the satellite meter itself comes in this uh, case. Now, I like the fact that it comes in this case. It's actually thicker than I thought it was. Big thick Game Boy type of thing. And I'm just going to pull it out of the case. <laughs> it's quite the funky color, I got to say. So this one says it's a FreeSat V8 Finder. Okay. Now when I looked at this, it said Diemco uh, was on it. But I don't see Diemco on this one. This one says FreeSat. I don't know if they're different brands or what the whole story behind that is. All your buttons, receiver buttons and all that. Uh, it has AV, AV, and an AV in and out, which is interesting. Your HDMI out. So basically, you can use this as a satellite receiver. It has a USB thing here and your plugs. Kind of like a meter, uh, similar to my other meter that I do have. So yeah, as I said, I do like the case. Uh, just something to be able to keep your meter on. And uh, I don't know if that... Purpose of that is with the, and then just sort of have something to keep that in, keep it a, keep it clean, keep it packed away for you know if you're using this for installing satellites, it's good to have that. So before I plug in this thing in, I'm gonna see if it needs any charge time, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, and I'm gonna go take a look at the manual. So to do a little comparison, I've done a video before on my uh, Sat Hero. Uh, definitely is a lot thicker. It definitely, uh, this yellow part, uh, where the blue is at the back, it's, uh, definitely has that more. I like that it has a switch here. This thing has the HDMI cable out. And this one doesn't have the, um, analog audio video out. Uh, it has a USB, um, type mini type charge plug thing. This one has a... That type of plug there. But I just can't get over the color of this device with the yellow um, sides and blue. I mean, I don't care. There is some where they have them gray, but I just have put out some of my kids' toys <laughs> to give you a compar comparison of these colors. I don't know. It, it, de it definitely gives this thing a kid's toy look to it. I don't care. I just want to, you know, I'm, I, I, I like that it has the case that's black. Um, it's just kind of interesting that it is um, these toy colors, which I don't care. I, don't, I mean, it does what it needs it to, what I need it to do, as long as it does that. And there's this truck here with the colors. First thing you're going to want to do is turn this annoying bleep sound off. So, to do that, uh, when you're in your satellite installation, you back out of that. And go into system and then go through your settings language AV local time saying OSD setting favorites and other you want to select other so you'll see the uh, thing that says beeper and that's on turn that thing off 
get rid of that noise. You might want it, but really, I just find it's nothing but annoying. Um, so I just uh, turn that right off. I don't bother using that at all. That's probably going to be your first thing when you turn this thing on, get it charged it up. You're going to want to turn, turn, that, turn that thing off. All right, so when you go into your settings, first thing you get hit one is the blue button to move your satellites around. As you can see, I just simply manually entered my satellites to whatever I want them. Basically, the position of where it is and what uh, whether it's C or KU band. That's usually what I go by. I don't really go by so much of what the satellite is called like SES2 here <laughs> and then you go into your settings you can look at your channel list you can delete all your channels but I don't want to do that I've set everything up here so I want to go to satellite installation I'm on KU band and I'm using a universal LMB and I want to put it on port 3 so that I can be able to see what's going on in the background and there I can see the signal now it's not the strongest signal I need to move the dish a little bit with the super jack power, mo power uh, mover so I back out of there and there you can see the signal this is just a Tennessee Aquarium one thing I want to emphasize is if you do want to use it as a receiver that little battery light at the top of the screen will be up all the time so with the uh, settings um, you can simply change add a satellite by hitting the transponder button the back button and you can also look at your transponders by hitting the back button and going down through your uh, through the transponders if you're trying to aim your dish this will be handy or in my case with it being on a mover I put it on that transponder to move the dish um, so that I can get the strongest amount of signal before I do a scan So if through all your settings here, we got your language settings. Everything's set for English here. Uh, you got your AV settings um, set for auto. One issue I had was that when it was set to 1080i, it was blinking on me. Set your time settings, all of your usual settings. There's actually not a whole lot extra settings on this thing. Like the favorites, I'm not even going to bother because I don't really use this as a satellite receiver. And other, that's where we have the beeper setting, which you want to turn off so you don't get a headache with that thing sonar sound going off all the time so if we look at 87 KU band here and I'm gonna move it over to um, 50 Intel set 20 uh, 21 which is at 55 West so I got on CCTV um, so I just want to go into the system or satellite installation and I want to do a scan here so I'm just gonna quickly go through a blind scan and I'm going to set it for uh, just free to air channels. And I just go in and do a search once you have your si signal locked. And this will help um, uh, you find everything. Now I just put this on fast motion here in the video. Just to, It takes a few minutes to do a blind scan. Um, but I, I just wanted to quickly kind of illustrate how that will work when you have it connected. And how you can scan through all your channels. Now on Intel SAT 21 at 55 West does have a lot of interesting channels. It has RT. It has... Um, a lot of uh, Spanish channels. It also has a lot of radio channels and it has um, uh, France 24, NHK um, and uh, Airing and and CCTV, a bunch of uh, channels from all over the world. So you get news perspective from all over the world. This satellite finder will work with Orbi TV for that if you're trying to aim your dish at the Orbi satellite at 117 West or any other subscription satellite, but it will not decrypt the encrypted channels. But you can see what services are there and then connect it to your proprietary receiver from your service provider. In all, it's a, it's a neat concept, very handy. At the price, it's, um, for me, I'm so much into this hobby, it's great. Now you might wanna install Dish Network or Orbi TV or, Direct TV. This could be a tool for that as well. The only thing is that this won't do is it won't view the encrypted channels. But what you can do is get the signal and uh, be able to see the signal. So I aim my C-band dish at the satellite that gets Orbi and uh, was able to, with my CKU band LMB on my 8-foot dish, I was able to pick up the signal from Orbi TV. So if you want to use this for Say you want to set up your friends with Orbi or you want to start a business of so being a satellite installer. You advertise on Kijiji. Hey, do you want me to come set up your satellite dish at your camper or something like that? You, you know, you could do that. It would be for, for like $40, $50.
this could do it. Now, the only thing is I had my uh, one problem with this thing. Now, I was able to set up my motorized um, KU band dish and C band dish that I've been tinkering around with in my backyard, the four foot dish. So I've been able to uh, tinker around with that a little bit. Um, but then I moved my other dish, which was a um, 36, which my motor died. And I couldn't get signal on Galaxy 19 with this thing. I was moving around, uh, not getting bit by bugs. It was late at night. It could have been the overcast and maybe there were, just wasn't enough signal. I had to go back to my Sat Hero. So I ended up, you know, I've used this on other satellites and found signal. But then when I was trying to set up another satellite with a linear KU LMB, I had to go back to this. It doesn't say that this won't, ha won't work for me. It's just maybe the position of the dish was not optimum. But anyway, for getting really weak signals, I found this thing because it's built for that purpose of getting weak signals. The Sat Hero was out, was outperforming, but these are both of these are like satellite are satellite receivers, and every free satellite TV receiver has its quirks. Some they'll be really um, bare bones and easy to use. Like one of these is uh, pretty much like one of those fifty dollar receivers, um, but uh, they're just kind of cheap and sometimes like I've had this thing crash on me. I was doing a blind scan and it crashed and I had to reboot it. So I rebooted it. So there's that thing to take into account. Uh, but it, it's cheap. It's, you know, if you're just getting in free to air, it's worth a try. If you want to get something more expensive like this, I think these are, um, they're, they're, they used to be like $300, but I think they're more reasonable around a hundred now. Uh, so Sat Hero is a little bit better quality for finding weak signals is, is what I would say. But for this price and what this is, and this thing, the battery is not as reliable anymore. So to buy a new battery, this thing for 40 bucks, I think it was, would pretty much be what the battery would be. So that's why I ended up buying this. So one place you want to check out is tvrosat.com. Uh, they'll have several satellite charts here. And here is where you can find the frequencies for those channels. So if you want the frequency for, say, you want to lock the uh, PBS uh, saddle, uh, channels, you key in the, the frequency, and then right here would be the symbol rate. And you don't need to worry about the FEC, but you do need to worry about whether it's horizontal or vertical. That will be on where you need to input your frequencies for that sort of thing. Another place you can go find frequencies and channels is over on Linksat, and they'll have the the um, C band and KU band channels. Now, one thing I find with Linksat, uh, sometimes they don't take the channels that are down off Linksat, so they might still up, be up there. So you have to watch out for that. So for C band, it will be 3847 for AMG, and it'll be vertical, and the symbol rate will be 22,000 is what you'll want to enter on your on your meter to tune that one in. I don't know if you're trying to do it with. KU band is a five digit input, uh, five, put, five digit frequency and, and a uh, five digit symbol rate. Sometimes the symbol rates might be four digits as well. So just, just so you're aware of that. Another issue I had with this is when I went to install the North American satellites, they weren't programmed into it. There was a few north american satellites but i pretty much i i got a view of about 40 around 44 west to about one 133 on a clear day depending um on the trees and all that it, usually uh, when there's not as much leaves on the trees i get the 133 uh west so i can get most of the arc not all the arc but pretty much most of it with trees in my area so uh with this it didn't have all the satellites programmed in. So that was a big uh, my, uh, thumbs down for this thing. There wasn't the programmed in satellites. Now, I could simply, what I ended up doing was I just ended, entered in um, 97C band, 97C and 97KU. And I just named all my satellites like that when I programmed it in here. And programming in uh, the titles in this, so it's like basically like sending a text like back in like the early 2000s, late 90s, or with a num numeric pad, which is really annoying and time consuming. But that's how I did that. I wish that this thing had, or there was a place online where I even, where I can share my settings for this thing. Um, so that uh, you don't have to spend hours trying to set up all your satellites. And that's 
one big thing that was really annoying, so someone who doesn't maybe understand free to air or just getting in a hobby, that's one thing that's gonna um, be hard for you. Like you're gonna have to manually enter in each style, like find it and move your dish a little bit, little bit, little bit every time to set it up, which is kind of annoying. Unless you already have a receiver that is set up, which I do, and so what I ended up doing was I aimed my dish at the at the satellite I wanted to be on, scanned it in, na named and labeled the satellite, and then did a scan. So that's uh, that's what I ended up doing with this device. Uh, it was time consuming. It took a couple days to set it all up, and then there's then there's a few other days when I set up all the KU band stuff. So I set up all the C band stuff from 55 West all the way to 133, and then went and did the KU band. And now it's all mixed up. It's, it's a mess. So uh, I think I can move all that around. But yeah, that's uh, a big thumbs down on this thing was it didn't come with the North American satellites. Even though it came with the North American plug. But it's just thrown in a box and it's like, hey, here, here it is. Um, have fun with it. So yeah. Uh, if the manufacturer of these things want to get a hold of me, uh, I can send you like I can send you the data file off this thing so that you can use that and and when you sell these things, you're welcome to call me. <laughs> or if you bought one of these things and you have a place I can upload that, I don't know. So there's lots of devices like this on line, but I don't think they're all exactly the same. They might be their slightly different quirks and uh, runs in its manufacturing. But uh, if you want to help out my channel, please click on the Amazon and eBay links and my affiliate marketing links. By doing so, you will help me out. If this, uh, if uh, what I've done has helped you out, please help me out by just clicking on those links. If you're going to do some online shopping, it just throws a little bit of a of a commission my way, so that it helps support my work in doing these tutorials. I would really appreciate that. Even if you're not going to buy that particular item, if you click on the Amazon link or the eBay link and then click on other links, it will help me out then the links will, for these items will be in the description and also in the comments so that you can find them easily.